Back in Biz was a live stream reading event originally broadcast in the winter of 2021, featuring episodes from the Solve It Squad animated series being developed by Tin Can Bros. These are those episodes. Cold open. Interior train car. Day. Beep, 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 and alarm blares. Wake the fuck up, you sorry excuse for a soldier! Slap. Esther, uh, eyes op burst open to reveal the point of view of a soldier who has just been smacked away by a blurry Officer Esther. The officer pulls the soldier out of a bunk and upright. We got a locomotive ready to fly off the fucking tracks here. Quit flicking your bean and suit up! The soldier ties a flannel shirt around their waist and pulls a beanie on their head and shoves glasses over their eyes. Suddenly, the scene comes into focus. On the periphery, other shadowy soldiers suit up in a similar fashion. Officer Esther walks the soldier to the end of the car. The conductors lost their mind. They're moving too fast. Probably that cocaine in our cereal this morning. Officer Esther unholsters a gun. They open a hatch on the wall to reveal a glass case with a huge doobie inside. They smash it open with their elbow and screw the doobie into the barrel of the gun like a silencer. We need you to make your way to the cab and sedate the conductor, pronto. Sound good, Esther? As Officer Esther hands the gun to the soldier, it reveals that the soldier is, in fact, another Esther. They nod and smirk. Semper fine, Esther. The sound of a wailing siren fills the train car. Ah, shit. We gotta slow this loose caboose or it's countdown to breakdown of the nervous variety. Good luck. We love you. Officer Esther gives Soldier Esther a quick peck on the cheek. The red alarm lights illuminate the entire car of soldiers, all of whom are also Esthers. We love you, Esther! Exterior, Esther's train of thought. Continuous. The train barrels through a chaotic landscape of memories, random factoids, and porn. Lots of porn. Esther climbs a ladder to the top of the train, holding the gun in their teeth. Without warning, the train switches tracks, nearly throwing Esther off. In the distance, the tracks, at the, uh, the tracks end at the edge of a vast canyon. A billboard next to it reads, Welcome to Esther's endless nervous breakdown. Don't fall in. It's hell down there. Esther's eyes go wide. Not on my watch! Esther acrobatically flips and tumbles from car to car, navigating the jerks and jolts as the train speeds by stations labeled People's, People I've Slept With, birth dates of all the Dave Matthews band members, and recipe for Taco Bell cinnamon twists. From the train windows, soldiers poke their heads out to wave their beanies and cheer Esther on. Whoa, Simone Biles has nothing on you. Your ass looks toy in those leggings, dog. We're gonna live forever. The wind whips the glasses from their face. My glasses! The train barrels into a Costco wholesale, flying past memories. A customer yelling at Esther while Esther shoves all the burrito samples into their mouth. Esther, sleeping on the display, couches under piles of multi-pack underwear. Esther, stealing tubs of pretzels by stuffing them under their shirt. The train crashes through the other end of the warehouse and shards of concrete and metal fly into the air. Fully airborne like fucking Legolas, Esther uses incoming debris like stepping stones to maneuver themselves into the engine cabin. Up ahead is the conductor, who is, as you guessed it, another Esther. They're manically flipping switches and pulling levers with a crazed look in their eye. Should I buy a new pantsuit? I got a rash wearing one at Andy's bachelor party. Did I jump off the space needle that night? Shit, I should add that to my screenplay! Esther approaches slowly from behind, aiming the doobie gun at the conductor, Esther's head. They cock the weapon, ready to blow a gnarly dose when... Esther? Esther freezes. They grab the conductor's shoulder and spin them around. The conductor has scrags his face. Esther? You ready for the presentation? What the... Pull out from Esther's surprised face to reveal a bird's eye view of the train. As the perspective continues to get wider, the train's snaking pathways become a network of firing neurons, and then fleshy folds of a human brain before finally pulling out from the wide eyes of the real Esther in interior Mayberry Middle School Auditorium. Day, Esther gasps like they've been submerged underwater. <gasps> The rest of the squad is on stage about to address the entire school. The fuck rings out in the large room. The kids snicker at the foul word. Uh, the, uh, presentation we're doing for the kids? Whose kids? These kids? 
I volunteered us to be the keynote speakers for Drug Free is the Way to Be, remember? So I can show the PTA I care about my kids' education. Right, right. Yeah, I'm gonna sit this one out. What, no fair. To be here, I canceled a jam sesh with my cover band, Booty and the Flow, bish. It's just participating in this doesn't really align with my worldview. Oh, come on, Esther. I'm sure there's something you can share with us, you can share with the kids about substance abuse. Sure. Uh, sup, dudes. So, uh, the thing about drugs is <laughs> they're lit. And if you do them, you'll be lit too. Peace. Esther lights a cigarette and saunters out. The kids all cheer. A teacher by the exit glares at them. You should be ashamed of yourself. And you should use less flammable hairspray. Esther flicks their cigarette into the teacher's hair, which immediately catches on fire. She screams and run a, runs out ahead of Esther. All right, kids, who here has ever pounded a beer so fast that their face went numb? No one raises their hands. Good, let's keep it that way. Exterior Mayberry Middle School, an hour later. A bell rings and the students file out of the auditorium. One kid, Scotty, continues to bother the squad with questions. Mr. Skragtowski, did you ever have to shoot a junkie who wanted to stab you for crack? Uh, no, I'm proud to say that I never had to use my firearm in the line of duty. <laughs> <laughs> Bummer. I mean, I shot and revived countless junkies on episodes of Officer Dr. Cop MD. Ugh, it's not the same as actually taking a life. The squad nervously watches Scotty as he walks away. Guys, do you think the internet is bad? Just then, a screaming man falls out of the sky and lands splat on the pavement in front of them, rather dead. The squad looks up to find Esther on the roof, shrugging. Back in 1995, four meddlesome teens and their talking dog, Kluber, achieved pseudo-celebrity status by solving mysteries that had somehow stumped adults. They called themselves the Solid Squad. Cracking cases in the 90s style, showing crooks crime never pays. But then Kluber got murdered in a satanic ritual and everybody went their separate ways. Flash forward, has just been on LSD every other day. When went into acting to pretend the pain away. Action scripts was in the FBI with PTSD. Kate, they're just a fucking loser dead in a fight. Solid squad, solid squad. Getting back together cause life sucks on their own. Solid squad, solid squad. Scooby dooby ray dooby say thank you bye. Act one, exterior auditorium an hour earlier. A teacher bursts out of the auditorium screaming and plunges her flaming head into a water fountain. Esther saunters out behind her. Okay, let's pay a visit to the old stoner haunts. Interior family bathroom moments later. A young student mom is changing her baby's poop filled diaper while yelling into her cell phone. No, Bella, I'm not going to Jaden's Minecraft themed birthday party because last year I left with a bun in the oven. Hey, Occupied. Esther swoops in through the door. Uh, don't find me. Esther hits the baby changing station like Fonzie and a small bag of weed tumbles out. Interior science classroom. Two annoying boys are using a Bunsen burner to try and set their farts on fire. Esther slides up between them and grabs the Bunsen burner. Yoink. Interior library. Esther appears behind a sleeping boy and rips a page from an open copy of Crime and Punishment. A stern librarian whips around. Esther turns to the sleeping boy. The librarian smacks the boy with a ruler. Exterior auditorium roof, moments later. Esther sits on the roof with their hull, rolling a fat joint. Nearby, a young boy wails as some bullies hoist him up a flagpole by his wedgie. Esther smiles and lights up with the Bunsen burner. Magnificent. <laughs> Excuse me, are you uh, smoking marijuana up here? Esther sighs and pulls a bottle of chloroform from their jacket. Because we have a very strict puff, puff, pass policy at this school. Esther spins around. The snitch is none other than their old teacher, Mr. Wayne Farmer, a Tommy Bahama clad parrot head whose too tan skin is clearly riddled with melanoma. Mr. Farmer? Shit, homie, I was about to neutralize you. Wouldn't expect anything less from my all-time favorite pupil. He pops a squat next to Esther who passes him the joint. 
Mr. Farmer takes a huge pull and considers the inhale. This my peanut butter nut sack kush? From my emergency stash in the family bathroom. Still there after all these years. So you still teach in ethics or what? <clears throat> Mr. Farmer exhales, coughing. <clears throat> no, no. The kids tried to cancel me a few years back. A few old uh, smut films I did back in JUCO made the rounds through Snappy Chat. Got placed in Typing 101 until the heat dies down. What are you up to these days? Well, I was doing human trials for an MDMA-infused vibrator, but now I'm, I'm back with the, uh, the Solvit Squad. That's cool, man. Back in the day, you guys did some ballsy shit. Kids now just do these dance challenges where they send videos to each other of their arms flailing around. It's like, catch a fucking serial arsonist without an iPhone, you dweebs. That's a challenge. (laughs) Yeah, Appreciate you never ratting me out for selling you kids weed and booze. Must have been tough to cover up seeing as you're one fourth of a crime solving team. You'd think, but my friends are idiots. Speaking of your astoundingly irresponsible side hustle, you got anything stronger than this? I think the shelf life of this 15-year-old bud has long since passed. Well, now now, now that you mention it, I could offer you one of these. Esther puts out the roach on their forearm, and Mr. Farmer removes a dime-sized pill from a sealed wrapper. Esther grabs the pill, puts it in their mouth, and swallows. What? What? Don't... You don't... You want to know what it is first? I uh, usually a try, try to avoid spoilers, but yeah, sure, let's hear it. <laughs> well, friendo, you are about to embark on a journey that will shatter your soul into a million little pieces and then birth you anew. Eh, I'll take that with a grain of salt. Sting said the same thing before we smoked DMT in a Red Lobster parking lot. They call it Triple X. The name smashes onto the screen. Because it'll give you a more extreme trip than anything else out there. Uh, Technically only three times more extreme, but yeah, go on. Mr. Farmer rolls a chalkboard over and begins writing out the name and doodling little examples. The T stands for tremors, violent full body tremors. That's where it usually starts for most folks. His drawing of several teens on a couch comes to life and they begin to aggressively shake. A cat licks the foot of one of the teens and is booted across the room. Oh, great, a teaching moment. It shakes you up at first, but then it's smooth sailing because the R is for relaxation. The chalk doodles attempt to high five each other, but go limp before contact. They all face plant onto the floor, their limbs reduced to jello. Esther yawns and gives a rapid this up motion. But don't get too comfortable because the psychedelic visions come next. That's the P. The ceiling above the teen doodles turn into an upside down ocean. The cat rides a boat across while the ceiling fan morphs into a kraken. Cute. And uh, what's the L? Laryngitis? (laughs) Laughter. Hilarity that could only be described as Larry the Cable Guy in his heyday. The teen doodles start howling uncontrollably, rolling on the floor in fits of laughter. Yeesh. I used to look up to you, dude. So if you're looking to get her done, (laughs) Triple X is the way to go. Any questions? Esther raised their hand. What does the X stand for? The X? Well, that's for complete and total ecstasy. Esther eyes him suspiciously. Yeah, but ecstasy starts with an E. I know, I know, it's fucked up, right? He raises his eyebrows, tears another wrapper, and pops a triple X pill in his mouth, staring at Esther longingly. Esther, are you ready to finally acknowledge the energy that's between us? No, 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 not this. I'm out, dude. Esther turns to leave. But, but we were, we were going to trip balls together. Well, so far, I'd say this trip is less hardcore than children's Tylenol. And the only thing I'm feeling is what it's like to be on a Joss Whedon set. Relax, it moves through everybody differently. Some people trip for two hours, some for two days. The sweats, the unquenchable horniness, the pants shitting, it's all part of the raw sexual thrill, dude. It can hit at any time. Mr. Farmer's hand holding the chalk begins to shake. The quiver pulses through his arm and into his chest. Ooh, 
Here come the neurons. That's my fucking line. Mr. Farmer's incredible tremors propel him across the roof. Esther observed, uh, unfazed. Oh yeah, that's where it's at. Don't you agree, Subway Sandwich? Have I introduced you to my buddy Sam, who is both a submarine sandwich and a lady of magical spells? <laughs> What's that, Sam? Esther looks like who? He looks to Esther, narrows his eyes, then bursts into laughter. You're right. Yes, it's in the eyebrows. His laughter escalates and a boner pitches a tent in his board shorts. He suddenly stops to stare into the distance. My God, Esther, do you see it? It's magnificent. He lunges forward and off the roof, plummeting to his death. Esther runs to the ledge and spots the squad below with Mr. Farmer dead at their feet. Zoom in to Esther's eyes. Interior, Esther's train of thought, visual control room. A number of consoles display Esther's vision. A group of NASA Esther scientists stare cluelessly. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Th this throws off all of our projections. There's practically no way we can recover this mission. Uh, execute emergency shrug protocol. The nervous Esther cautiously enters a command and Esther shrugs in the visual display. After a beat, the entire control room erupts with cheers as Esther scientists celebrate the successful maneuver. They shake hands, pop champagne, and light cigars. Nervous NASA Esther and boss NASA Esther start making out furiously. Exterior Mayberry Middle School later. Crying children are led away by parents as paramedics zip up the body bag and load it onto a stretcher. Scotty, the morbid kid from earlier, stands nearby, watching with delight before he is ushered away by Principal Turner. She approaches the squad. Her cheery energy is very obviously masking a full-blown panic attack. Hi, Principal Paige Turner. Thanks again for coming in today for the kids. So this is really bad, huh? Yeah, for sure. Heroes are remembered, but legends never die. Keith takes a sip from a flask and pours the rest on the body bag. The paramedics rush over to carry the stretcher away. But uh, yes, this is not good. An on-campus death could really tarnish a school's brand. Hello? I was curious if Mayberry Prep is accepting new students. I'm never going to hear the end of this from the school board. Uh, we'll do our best to help, but it'll be tough without any reliable witnesses. Mr. Erasure, I already said what happened. Mr. Farmer was attempting to exterminate a wasp nest with a Bunsen burner. They attacked him, and in the chaos, he slipped and fell. Gwen <laughs> bursts into tears. As, uh, Keith tries to control, uh, console Gwen, her. Gwenny, it is okay. God just needed another angel to keep him company in heaven. Oh, no. <laughs> Esther's story just reminded me of that scene in My Girl. I can't. Oh, I gotta say, the wasp nest checks out. With recent budget cuts, te teachers have had a lot on their plate, including custodial work. Plus, we all knew Farmer had a little side hustle. She mimes smoking a joint and lifting a top hat like a Charlie Chaplin figure. She's clearly never smoked weed. Esther's eyes go wide, worried that this might blow their story. Oh, shit. Mr. Farmer was a mime? I'm not familiar with rave culture, nerd party one, that's me. But no, I meant that Mr. Farmer dealt marijuana. Scraggs eyes Esther suspiciously, then spots a crumpled wrapper on the concrete where Mr. Farmer's body landed. He crouches down and grabs it with little tweezers from his investigation fanny pack. Hmm, seems like that wasn't the only product he had in stock. Scraggs holds up the blood-speckled triple X wrapper. Esther gets a good look at the insignia on the packaging for the first time. An eagle with an enormous wiener. Interior, Esther's train of thought, visual control room. A NASA Esther sipping coffee and watching the monitors does a spit take and screams into the intercom. <laughs> the Orlov cartel is in Mayberry. This is not a drill. Interior, Esther's train of thought, engine cab. The soldier Esther, Esther from the cold open, shoveling coal into the firebox, hears the announcement. Well, poke me in the belly button and call me a glory hole. They take a huge rip of the doobie gun before pulling a big lever on the console. The train switches tracks and is now barreling through the streets of Moscow. It passes memories of Esther at a bar getting rowdy with a bunch of Russians, all of whom have the Orlov Eagle insignia tattooed on their arms. Esther in a warehouse with Russian toddlers packaging heroin. They sample the merchandise and nod approvingly. 
Esther in a study dropping a fat wad of Russian rubles on the ornate desk of lavish kingpin Dmitry Orlov, who reclines, toasting Esther with a shot of vodka. Exterior Mayberry Middle School. Esther is shaken, but she tries to play it cool. You, you don't know shit about dicks, Greggs. I'd know if that was a Schedule One narcotic. This is candy. Uh, I don't know, Esther. This kind of looks like the wrapper for the double XL brand of condoms I use. It seems Mr. Farmer was also the proud owner of a uh, manaconda. A drug dealer and a pervert? <laughs> Wish I didn't hear that. Blah. Goodbye, Gates from Nation Grant. I guess the PTA is going to need to organize more bake sales to make up for the. No! Huh. I mean, what? No. Another bake sale? That's ridiculous. Th that our our teachers are so grossly underfunded they work so hard and this definitely won't work for me we will absolutely exonerate mr farmer of any sexual crime so that no parent ever needs to participate in a bake sale ever again uh you think we can take a look in the typing classroom to see what we can find yes of course right this way scraggs gwen and keith follow her leaving esther behind they pull out a cigarette I it's like Napoleon said, if you want to cover up your ties to a Russian drug cartel, you got to do it yourself. They bring the cigarette to their lips, but their hand begins to shake, making it impossible to light. They keep trying, but the shaking only gets more intense. What the shit? Interior, Esther's train of thought, engine cap. Soldier Esther has lost control of the train, which now seems to be moving of its own accord. The train shifts onto roller coaster tracks, climbing up a hill past a sign that says, Welcome to Triple X. First stop, Tremors. At the apex before the impending drop, the loops and corkscrews and all the and the altogether wild ride ahead is revealed. Ah uh, yes. Forgot about this plot line. Act two, interior computer lab. Moments later, Principal Turner turns on the lights to reveal tables lined with dozens of colorful 90s IMAX. The squad files in. All right, gang. If there's one thing a serial criminal does well, it's hide evidence. Rain! Keith begins unnecessarily flipping over tables, pulling out drawers, and tearing down posters in his hunt for clues. Eep! Oh, just be careful around our brand new computers. Keith, please. If I'm forced to do another fundraiser for my kids, I'm going to kill everyone in this room and then myself. Keith abruptly halts. Esther stumbles into the room, every one of their limbs vibrating out of control. The tremors suddenly cease right before Esther tumbles into a computer. They steady themselves on a chair. Holy cow, Esther, are you okay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm just foot loose and fancy free. Ever get a song stuck in your head and you just can't stop dancing? All the time. <laughs> Sometimes you're crazy. Do you wanna why? Gwen, you know it. I'm such a baby that the dolphins make me cry. Well, there's nothing I can do. Great help, Esther. Esther joins in begrudgingly to keep up the ruse. I only want to be with you. <laughs> oh my, you all are right. Here, how about this classic? Let's just get to the bottom of this or else my job is on the line. <laughs> A tremor runs down Esther's arm and they punch an iMac, which falls off the desk and shatters into a million Bondi blue pieces. Esther, why don't you search Mr. Farmer's desk away from equipment the PTA is going to have to fundraise to replace? Esther makes their way to Mr. Farmer's desk. Okay, breathe, Esther. You've been through worse at Bonnaroo. Use that big, beautiful brain of yours. If you were a middle school drug dealer, where would you hide your stash? My, they, they open a desk drawer to find an enormous stash of triple X. <laughs> they shoot, they score. Esther attempts to secretly shove all of it into their pockets, but a massive tremor hits and they toss the drugs into the air. <laughs> Look, Esther found a pinata. A pinata filled with cock socks. Not uh, no, Keith. These aren't condoms, as I suspected. This is some kind of new designer drug. Oh, mm. thank God, we're pedo free. Mm. Gwen mm. finds a pamphlet in the drawer. Esther's eyes narrow. The future of drug is exciting. It's best extreme. It's simply excellent. It's is triple X. Well, it's a good branding impulse. Mm, sounds to me like it's poorly translated Russian. 
Esther gulps and grabs a paper off the desk, thrusting it towards the group. Vince Hutcherson. That's our guy. Case closed. Scraggs looks down at a typing assignment riddled with errors, marked up with red pen, and the note says, I expected more from you, Vince. Esther, you think this kid, Vince, designed all of these pamphlets, acquired all of the product, and managed a crew of local dealers? That might be assuming a lot from someone who typed the wrong form of there on their assignment. There, there, and there. Vince was also the star of last year's production of Fiddler on the Roof, Jr. And I can't imagine anyone who played such a dimensional and lived in Tevia could ever. No, no, no. My role in the squad is to advise you on the market and culture for illegal substances. This is as clear as a proactive user's forehead. I expected more from you. What more? More triple X. Use your noggins, you numbskulls. Oh, I don't know. Bam, Esther experiences a full body shockwave, whipping their arm out, knocking Principal Turner to the floor. Trust me. Exterior Hutcherson House. Later. Esther, still experiencing intense tremors, kicks down garden gnomes, sprinkler heads, and lawn lights as the squad approaches the front door. Lead of the musical, side hustling for some coin, getting laid in the shade. <laughs> this Vince must think he's a real Keith Swanson. Mm, I'm still not convinced this is going to lead anywhere. Blah, blah, blue. I'm Scraggs. I have control issues. I wouldn't be doubting this plan if it came from a man. No, no. Hey, that's not fair. I never, besides, aren't you gender non-conforming? So technically it doesn't really- Scraggs, darling, I know you're trying to be woke, but maybe sit the rest of that thought out. Scraggs shrugs. She's right. Esther rings the doorbell and Dina Hutcherson, a stylish suburban housewife, answers the the door in high-end athleisure wear. Uh. No, thank you. We're already Mormon. Howdy. We're the Solvit Squad. Is Vince home? Esther holds out their hand to greet Dina, but instantly passes out, falling forward into Dina's cleavage. Exterior, Esther's train of thought, engine cab. The battered train rattles through the seemingly endless loops and corkscrews on the tremor coaster. Soldier Esther and several other engineer Esters are frantically trying to keep it on the tracks. Keep it steady now! The train accelerates up a hill and flies off the tracks above the clouds and right onto a soft mattress. All is calm. Soldier Esther and their crew are now wearing large, comfy ACDC concert t-shirts. The Goo Goo Dolls song, Iris, softly rings out. Fluffy clouds form the elegant cursive words, take a load off with triple X, relaxation. Interior Hutcherson, living room, later. Vince, an entitled drama student, sits on the couch scrolling Instagram. Across from him stands Keith alongside Esther, slumped in a recliner. Keith nudges Esther, who drowsily lifts one eyelid. So, what's the play? A Pittsburgh poke and prod, Uncle Sam's left hook, don't wake daddy? Here's the thing, Vince. We all want the same thing. A nap. Give us the names of the potheads at school and we'll pin this on them and then we'll get cozy and go to sleep for the rest of our lives. Oh, the old good cop, hot cop, 10-4. Yeah, I don't fraternize with the stoners. I'm on vocal rest until susical rehearsals and the smoke could harm my instrument. (laughs) Keith, I'm just going to shut my eyes for a second. So just give me a few hours. Esther reclines back and curls up in the fetal position. With pleasure. What my partner is saying is, if you don't snitch on your supplier, we're going to do unthinkable things to ruin your career in the theater. And buddy, oh, the things we can think. Interior Hutcherson Kitchen, simultaneous. Every inch of wall is covered in awards and photos of Vince's theater roles, like Mr. Mushnick and Little Shop of Horrors School Edition, Grandpa Joe and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and Godot and Waiting for Godot. Dina sets down a bowl of pretzels and pours Gwen and Scraggs some iced tea. Gwen studies a framed medal hanging on the wall. Look at that! I was also the recipient of the Melissa Joan Hart Award for Preteen Excellence in the Dramatic Arts. Well, it's much more competitive and prestigious today. Vince received a scholarship and ensemble role in this summer's outdoor production of Hair. Scraggs polishes off the last of the pretzels. Mm. Well, uh, Vince certainly seems like a busy young man. Have you noticed him hanging around with anyone you might deem as unsavory or something? 
Not that I can think of, and we drive that little Brando everywhere. Tap classes, costume fittings, network seminars. The whole mm. family has really hitched our wagon to Vince's rising star. Mm. Have all these extracurriculars put the family under any additional financial strain? Gwen, are you going to encourage little Cam in Paris to follow you into acting? Oh, no. I could never share the spotlight with my kids. Plus, we have a little don't ask, don't tell policy in our household. I don't ask them about their interests, and I don't care if they tell me. <laughs> Nonsense! A mother's place is always right where she's wanted least. You should get more involved. I'm going to add you to the Daily PTA Substack. Okay, sure, yeah, she'd love that. Now, do you mind if we pull focus back to Vince? <laughs> You will regret that, Benjamin Skraktowski. Interior Hutcherson living room, simultaneous. I already told you, I have no clue what Triple X even is. I'm only in Mr. Farmer's class because my parents thought when I asked for more vocal training, I meant vocational training. This little hotshot's talking like a big boy. Well, too bad vocational isn't a word, son. I would know because I am the very model of a modern major general. I've been from Asian vegetable, animal, and mineral, bitch! Esther wraps themselves in uh, a quilt, crawls towards the fireplace, and begins lighting it. Mmm, too loud. Too much chit-chat. Let's get Hugo with it. Come on, sit by the fire. Oh, yeah. Maybe a little ding, ding, steam, heat. We'll make him talk. A corner of the quilt catches fire and quickly engulfs most of Esther's back in flames. Oh my god! My Rent Jr. cast quilt! Keith jumps into action, grabbing another thick blanket and smothering the flames. He manages to put out the fire, but the quilt is burnt to a crisp. Oh, okay, all right. Ooh, this just took it to another level. Portraying Angel was such a vulnerable and challenging time for me. I learned how to drum on buckets, how to dance in heels, and how to stare into the run lights backstage to make my eyes water. It ripped me right open. That's so beautiful. You have such a nice, soft voice. Give me your phone. Keith snatches Vince's phone and dangles it above him like a carrot on a stick. Oh, should I text his cast that he's dropping out of the show? You wouldn't. Or delete his Insta post from when he staged door to Andrew Barth Feldman? No, he's the definitive Evan Hansen. Oh, I mean, I was just gonna suggest we put on some like rain noises or something. Uh-oh! Looks like someone just tweeted, eat shit, you sell out to Adina Menzel. No one minds the wicked. Okay, your musical theater knowledge is both intimidating and impressive. Interior Hutcherson kitchen, simultaneous. Dina is showing Gwen photos on her phone while Scraggs takes notes. Now, this is from the Techie Olympics. Since the backstage crews don't get their time in the spotlight, Vince thought they could compete against each other, and the parents can bet on the kids to win prizes like comp tickets, ad space and programs, and cash. I'll sign you up to sponsor a Techie in next year's Olympics. Uh, you're so aggressively involved. <laughs> hmm, has Vince ever been prescribed any performance enhancing drugs or? You're being awfully nosy. I thought you said you weren't police. We're not. We're just concerned parents. <laughs> it's a committee we formed, concerned parents of kids. We got a packed schedule of meetings and fundraisers. Doesn't leave me a lot of time to get involved elsewhere. Well, is there something I should be concerned about at the school? Well, uh, a little of this, a little of that. <laughs> just the occasional, you know, drug deal. <laughs> This rubs Dina the wrong way. <laughs> what sort of host am I? Looks like we need a pretzel refill. <laughs> she heads to the cabinet and reaches up for the pretzel bag. The back of her shirt lifts up, revealing a tattoo of an eagle with an enormous wiener. Gwen notices and nudges Scraggs, who spit takes his iced tea onto Vince's awards. <clears throat> um, forgive my gaze, Dina, but I just noticed your tattoo, and I could have sworn I saw it somewhere else before. Scraggs pulls a triple X pill from his fanny pack and Dina's eyes grow wide. How about we discuss some of your after-school activities, Dina? Interior Hutcherson living room. Keith has Vince pinned in the recliner, aggressively questioning him. Esther is buried in six layers of blankets. 
why hasn't Disney committed to professionally mounting the Ratatouille TikTok musical? Why? Well, maybe they just didn't think it was that good. That is insane. So many people watched it. The stream made like $2 million for the Actors Fund. For charity. It's not like it was real theater. You can't write a show on TikTok. It was amateur hour. It is elitists like you who are killing Broadway and stopping my Cars 2 musical from taking off. Give audiences what they want. Don't you hear the people sing? Guys, am I lavender scented? Dina gingerly pops into the room with uh, Scraggs and Gwen trailing behind. Honey, why don't you go warm up for your gender flip cabaret so I can have a moment alone with the squad? Vince starts past Keith and begins doing vocal trills and warm-ups on the way up the stairs. So if you care to find me, look to the western, look to the western sky. Oh, what a glorious day. When he's out of earshot, Scraggs addresses Esther and Keith. Uh, Esther, I think we owe you an apology. Yeah, you do. But for what exactly? Uh, it seems that Triple X was being supplied by the Hutcherson household after all. Esther bolts upright, throwing all their blankets into the fire. How? Oh, supporting Vince's theatrical calling hasn't been easy, fiscally speaking. I thought I answered a classified ad for Herbalife, and next thing you know, I'm a distribution rep for a Russian drug cartel. I understand your confusion. The Venn diagram of MLMs and drug empires is basically a circle. Yeah, and good parenting isn't easy. I mean, take my parents, for example. They were bad. Gwen said that if I disclose the location of their drug kitchen, you could guarantee no jail time and my family's safety. Just as long as the Barrywood family is excused from any and all future fundraising events or planning committees. Well, that's just great. <laughs> it sure is. <laughs> Dina says the kingpin of the whole operation is here in Mayberry right now. Dimitri o Orloff. Does that ring a bell? Esther freezes. We push into their eyes, arriving back in Esther's train of thought, engine cab. The train dreamily coasts on a cloud through a snow-covered Russian landscape as more of Esther's cartel memories passed by, including Dimitri sitting on a throne, his gorgeous wife, Annika Orlov, on one side, Esther sharpening a knife on his other. Annika caresses a prisoner's face, then slits his throat. Blood sprays onto Esther and Dimitri. Esther watches Dimitri and Annika sleep in their ornate bedroom suite. They open a safe and remove stacks of bills before disappearing into the night. Dimitri stands on his balcony, screaming Esther's name and maniacally firing a gun. Bam! The train lands back on the track, startling soldier Esther awake. Smoke starts billowing into the cab. Soldier Esther begins frantically manipulating the console, but the buttons now emit sensual noises when pushed. The train enters a zigzag stretch of the rainbow track. A kaleidoscope of different creatures float around the speeding train. A tiger elephant bear, part tiger, giraffe, elephant, and bear, speaks. Its words also appear in an animated speech bubble. Oh, remember how the P in triple X stands for psychedelic visions? We're here. Interior Hutcherson living room. Pull back out to Esther's shocked, shocked face. Oh no. I mean, oh no, I'm not familiar with the Orlovs. Esther turns to Dina who appears as the eagle with a huge wiener. Good luck. I personally oversaw the remodel of the drug kitchen. So if you could avoid trashing the place, that would be great. Ca -ca! Esther gulps nervously. Act three, Inter interior cartel hideout later. A cartel crony leans back in a folding chair next to an industrial metal door. Boom, the heavy door flies open, crushing the crony against the wall. Keith stumbles in, clutching his shoulder in immense pain. Scrag stands up from where he had just been picking the lock. Oh, fuck, fucky fuck. I'm fine, it's good, I'm fine. I'm just gonna pop it back in, one second. Keith, I almost had it. I've been doing lock picking tutorials on YouTube. <laughs> well, I beat you to it, so pay up, sucker. He awkwardly holds out his injured arm. I never agreed to a bet. Gwen breezes through the doorway, her phone buzzing with notifications. God damn it, Dina. You said you'd get me off these PTA email chains. Hey, Siri, set a reminder to turn Dina into the authorities. Esther cautiously enters the building, their eyes darting rapidly back and forth. Keith, 
You good, man? Esther's psychedelic point of view. The entire room pulses with neon glowing edges. At the center is Keith with a rhinoceros head. He's clutching his arm, which is an overextended slinky toy. Just a dislocated shoulder. Happens like twice a week. He pops his arm back in painfully, and the slinky compresses. Scraggs leans into Esther's line of vision. He has curly pubes growing all over his body. Esther, you with us? Yup. Pop. Yep, pop, pop. Every time Esther makes the P sound, the letters P U H drift out of their mouth like smoke rings. Normal point of view. The squad watches Esther with concern. After a second, Gwen's phone rings. Hello? Yes, I did call earlier today about new student enrollment at Mayberry Prep. This can't wait. Gwen steps aside to take the call. Scraggs unholsters his gun. All right, gang, let's maintain a ham sandwich formation. Tight corners, no crust. Keep your eyes on your 12, 3, 6, and 9. Esther! Esther! Oh. Esther is staring off at Gwen, a glazed look in their eyes. What? Sorry, it's just... Gwen is a phone. Esther's point of view. Gwen is, in fact, an enormous smartphone. Her face is made up of apps. We have them doing six hours a week of SAT prep. At 11 years old, we thought they were behind already. I'm putting you all down as personal references for the kids. Back me up on this if they ask you. Back to normal point of view. Uh, Scraggs, no offense, but I play Call of Duty online, so I've put in my 10,000 hours leading tactical assault missions. Esther's point of view. As Rhino Keith and Pube Scraggs, even hairier now, argue, Esther peers past them down the hallway. It warps and swirls in a trippy visual. Esther nods. Now this is a trip. Brat, brat, brat. The letters physically fly into the room like bullets. Esther hits the deck. Get down! Get the fuck down! We're taking fire! Normal point of view. Keith and Scraggs look down at Esther, confused. What are you waiting for? Do you want to fucking die? I, uh, I didn't hear anything, Keith. There's a small rattling sound from the next room. It's certainly not gunshots, but it's something. No, but believe all women, Scraggs. But, but, but Esther doesn't identify. Keith snatches Scraggs' gun and runs down the hallway, firing off shots like a maniac. Leroy Jenkins! Scraggs and Esther take off after Keith. Gwen speedwalks after them. Sorry, the kids are playing video games. What? Well, yes, we try to limit their screen time, but... Interior cartel hideout drug kitchen continuous. Keith closes his eyes and dives through the doors, firing off all the rounds of the gun. The action plays out in slow-mo. So glad you borscht eating scum never mind. Reveal an empty drug kitchen that's contemporary, clean, and looks straight out of architectural digest, save for the fresh bullet holes. Keith hits the ceramic tile floor hard. Scraggs and Esther run in. Are you out of your mind, Keith? Scrag snatches his gun from Keith and reloads the clip. Brat! Scrags yelps and shoots the fridge. Ooh. The rattling noise stops and a load of ice cubes fall out of the dispenser. Keith oh. playfully approaches the fridge. Uh, chill, Scrags. No need to flip out over the ice machine. Ah! Keith slips on the ice, scattered across the floor, and lands on his shoulder, dislocating it once more. Gwen, out of breath, finally makes her way into the room. Oh, I didn't even realize it was possible to have a GPA above a 4.0. Oh, okay. Dina was not kidding around with this kitchen, though. Look at the slab on this island. Oh, granite. This operation sure carries a hell of a price tag. From now on, guys, if you see anything suspicious, slowly and calmly alert me, okay? Esther's point of view. Rubble from Keith's gunfire casts strange shadows on the walls. They suddenly arise and begin to prance around like little gremlins. Over! Now! Cronies at the south wall! Normal point of view. Esther dives behind the island. Scraggs and Keith, already on edge, rush to comply. Keith pulls an oblivious Gwen down with him. Do you think they spotted us? Let me check. Esther's point of view. Esther peeks up over the island. The gremlin silhouettes are now all having sex with each other. A real animalistic bacchanal. I don't think so. God, they're really going at it. 
What, like they're fucking? Yes, Keith! They're smashing ass so hard, I'm not sure how they're gonna walk tomorrow. Uh, sure, I can hold. Did you see these cabinets? All soft clothes. Esther's point of view. Esther looks around frantically. Suddenly, a rainbow shoots out of their crotch and arcs across the room to a storage rack. A little leprechaun hops around a pot of gold stowed uh, on the rack. They're coming for me pot of gold, Esther! They've already finished off me brother! The shadow of a leprechaun in bed smoking. Gremlins surround him, tear him apart, and begin fucking his limbs. Oh, they've got a hostage. Scrags, you unload everything you got as cover. We gotta save that small ginger man. On my count. My count! The squad uses Scrags as a human shield as they bolt across the room. Scrags closes his eyes and cries out, firing his weapon wildly. The action plays out in slow motion. Poor Kluberg! Wait, where are the cronies? Scrags stops, but the rest of the squad barrels into him. They all tumble forward into the shelf, which revolves with the wall to dump them face first into a hidden room. Interior cartel hideout, hidden room. Scrags, Keith, and Esther stand up from the floor, stretching and cracking their necks and backs. Squen remains lying on the floor, still on the phone. Sorry, I missed that last bit about tuition pricing. We're in the middle of building a tiny home for the homeless. The kids just adore giving back. Keith rolls his shoulder and it's surprisingly nimble. Hey, did you look at that? Shoulder intact, up top, Scrags. <laughs> he high fives Scrags, pop. There goes his shoulder again. Oh. Scrags turns to the room and his eyes go wide. Oh shit, this cartel is not messing around when it comes to torture. Reveal a room packed to the brim with deadly devices. Spikes, chains, a medieval stretching rack. In the center of the room is an iron maiden that eerily resembles Esther. A small note is taped to the front. Esther approaches it cautiously. It reads, for Esther only. We're coming from you. Uh, we're coming for you. X-O-D-N-A. Am I still tripping balls or is that my name? Esther, you know Russian? Puzzled, Esther flips the note around. The English letters reform themselves into Russian. Suddenly, shouting is heard outside the room. The revolving door is kicked off its hinges, and six cartel cronies file in with guns aimed at the squad. <sighs> Duh. And if you and you should put your rookie in the air if you want to keep your yaichki intact. <sighs> the squad surrenders, except Gwen, who is still on the phone. I would, but I'm on the phone with a very prestigious private school that- A crony shoots into the ceiling. That, that totally has my callback number. <laughs> In interior cartel holding cell night. The squad is locked inside a dark and dank underground cell. Esther sits cross-legged on a metal mattress frame, tying the bed sheets uh, into a noose. Keith tries martial arts moves on the metal bars to no avail. Gwen attempts to get a signal on her phone while Scraggs calls out to their captors. Uh, hello, excuse me. I'm a diabetic and I'm gonna need my insulin soon. We're gonna get you that sugar shot, Scraggs. I'm like one Muay Thai move away from busting these bars open. He kicks the bars hard and likely breaks his foot. Well, <laughs> this day sucked. Time to take the L. Y'all can use this when I'm done with it. Esther hangs the bedsheet noose from an overhead pipe. Scrag snatches it away and unties it. You think you had a hard day? I was this close to ripping my kids from that public school dump and placing them into a private academy where I could pay my way out of having to raise them like an American, only to have shitty cell service snatch it all away from me. From me, of all people, a crusader for justice and children everywhere. Keith attempts to rip the bars apart with his bare hands. No, God, dude, goes unpunished. Interior, Esther's train of thought, visual control room. A group of NASA Esters stare seriously at the screens, taking in Gwen's emotional outburst. After a moment, one of them begins to chuckle. Soon, more Esters join in. The laughter heightens, becoming uncontrollable. <laughs> Purple gas pumps through the air vents. Outside, an enormous laughing gas tank is strapped to the side of the train with a mouthpiece secured to the locomotive. The tank reads, laughter, brought to you by Triple X. See you in the funny papers. Interior cartel holding cell. Esther bursts into hysterical laughter. Fuck you, Esther. You just don't understand the nuances of comparative suffering. When have you, you typed first world problems into a 3D printer? You, it, would, it would just be you. 
Uh, Esther, maybe this isn't the best time to workshop your stand-up routine, okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, maybe I should just help Keith in his futile efforts to try defying the laws of physics. Hey, I am trying to get us out of here. What have you done today to help? <laughs> Me? <laughs> I've only spent the entire day trying to prevent exactly this from playing out. Esther rolls on the floor in hysterics. They collect themselves in a, uh, for a moment. Okay, 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 <laughs> okay. We are definitely about to die, so I should make a confession. All day long. You've been high out of your mind. Yeah, we know. Oh, figures. But I bet you didn't realize I was also trying to cover up my connection to the Orlov cartel. Huh? Esther drops Trow, mooning the squad and revealing the Orlov insignia tattooed on their ass. The squad goes silent. Esther finger guns everyone, chuckling. <laughs> well, es Esther, you work for a Russian drug cartel? Oh, worked for a Russian drug cartel. The timeline's a bit fuzzy for me, but I vaguely remember what does the fox say being a cultural touchstone. Did you people no oh no 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 just some graphic design like odd jobs personal training oh thank god of oh. course i kill people you sugar-free dum-dums what the hell are they doing in mayberry so i didn't really end our relationship amicably i assumed they came for revenge and i stayed for the business esther removes one of the triple x pills from their jacket too bad I couldn't enjoy this because I was busting my ass to save yours asses. Like they say, man plans and God laughs. And then woman laughs at man for believing in God. A guard saunters down the stone steps and shouts to Esther in Russian. Give me a second. They've waited this long. Well, that's my time. It's been nice knowing you all. Tip your captors. The guard unlocks the cell. Wait, Esther, they might kill you. Almost certainly. But you're our friend. I'll let them know. B but if we knew what was happening, we could have helped you. Esther stops and turns to Scraggs. Eh, that would have been a boring episode. Slam, the cell door closes and the squad watches Esther walk away to a doomed meeting with fate. Interior, mansion bedroom suite. Shink! A flying dagger lodges in an upright wooden beam in the middle of the ostentatious bedroom. Nearby, Dmitri Orlov stands behind his wife, Annika Orlov. You're aiming from the shoulder. It must come from the wrist, my darling. Dmitri, I know how to throw a dagger. Perhaps if you stop manhandling me, I won't miss. Oh, so it is your husband's touch that is the problem, yes. Oh, I did not say that. You are projecting. The door of the bedroom swings open to reveal Esther. Dmitri and Annika stare them down. Tensions are high. Oh, you guys buy this palatial crypt or what? It's an Airbnb, but we got a discount for booking the entire month. Although they wouldn't budge on the cleaning fee, which really jacks the price up. Dimitri! An awkward beat. So, would you care to toss a knife at Pogo here? Reveal Pogo, a cartel crony strapped to the wooden beam. He's badly beaten and surrounded by several knives that have just missed his body. I'm good. Let's just get this over with. Well, we prefer you start with an apology. Our therapist said it would help to clear the air of past resentments and... Uh... Annika elbows Dimitri. Okay, fine. Uh, I apologize for taking off into the night. It was an insult to the Orlov family honor, blah, blah. I struggle with long-term commitments, blah, blah. Generational trauma, blah, blah. Just kill me now. Kill you? Why would we want to kill you? Uh, well, for one, I stole tens of thousands of dollars. You've done way worse to people for way less. I mean, what's Pogo's offense? He got a bit of eggshell in my omelet this morning. Case in point. Also, I found the Iron Maiden. It was specifically addressed to me. Oh, no, you saw it? We replaced the deadly spikes with Stuff Me Silly brand vibrators. Your favorite. That was supposed to be a surprise. Huh? So, 
all this was about our arrangement? Well, after you left the estate, things here were cold. That sensual flame within us was snuffed out. Our marriage was as dry as a milkless bowl of kashi. Were we angry about the money? Naturally. But would we trade it all for one more night of sexual magic with our beloved Esther? Absolutely. Esther finds the adoration suffocating. But there's a beauty in the fleetingness of it all, no? We dreamed, we creamed, we loved. But on to bigger and wetter things. We've tried everything, Esther. Counseling, hypnosis. We even hired someone to get extensive plastic surgery to look just like you. But it wasn't the same. So we did what any scorned lover would do. We moved halfway across the country and started a business to be close to you. Even the new product is a love letter to our Esther. Thruple Six. Oh, man. Oh, that's so nice of you. They begin to back Esther into a corner near the tray of throwing knives. You are the sail of our love boat, the song of our hearts, the glue of our gloop. Yeah, it's just like every time I think about settling down, it makes me want to choke on my own vomit, you know? Yes, of course, of course. But the thing is, Esther, we are unfathomably wealthy, so our wants and needs supersede all others. They are practically nose to nose with Esther. It is frightening and sexual. Well then, I guess this is a real between a cock and a hard place scenario, isn't it? Uh Uh-huh. Tell you what, let my friends go and you can do anything you want with me. That work for you? Uh Uh-huh. Esther clutches one of the throwing knives behind their back. Well, I guess I have no choice. Interior clubhouse the next morning. Scraggs paces on the phone. Gwen sifts through a box of junk labeled Esther's shit. Touch it and die. Keith rocks back and forth on the couch listening to Les Miserables on his iPod. Yeah, I Um, I appreciate the help, Chief O'Brien. Keep me posted and we'll do- What? Uh, No, I didn't see pictures of Mulligan's boat. Yeah, I've been a little busy, but sure. Yeah, yeah, I'll check out his Facebook. Okay, bye. He hangs up. Anything useful? Uh, My old uh, FBI buddies put out an APB on Esther, but nothing yet. You? Most of these burner phones don't have SIM cards and the napkin notes are all written in code. Do you guys, do you think Esther's dead? I don't, uh... I honestly don't know, Keith. Because I always thought I'd be the first to go. You know, like, I volunteer to feed myself to a shark so the raft doesn't capsize, and then you can all make it to a shore or something. If I knew for sure that Esther was heading to their death, I, I could have gone in their place. Keith, it's a nice thought. But I think you underestimate how cowardly you are. Yeah. The trapdoor entrance of the clubhouse bursts open and Esther crawls through, looking like they've been through hell. The squad rushes to help. Esther, you made it! I am a hero! Well, hold on, hold on, just just give me a minute. Esther collapses on the couch. Give me a cold beer, a bendy straw, and a wet wipe. (laughs) They do. Very good. Esther shoves the cold beer down their pants, cracks the top, and shoves the bendy straw in, sipping while it cools their crotch. Then they begin gently scrubbing the red stains from their hands, and the gang leans in, nervously. We're so sorry, Esther. After they took you, we were blindfolded and put in an Uber. I only caught a glimpse of the license plate once it dropped us off, but it was a town car. How fancy. I I tried to fight off the guards so that we could swoop in for the assist, but I got this Charlie horse at like the worst possible moment. I'm sure you did. Esther, I I know you're a pretty private person, but we don't always know what's going on in your head. But if you want to talk about what happened, we're here for you. Esther turns to Scraggs, putting on a smile. All you need to know is I took care of it. Interior mansion bedroom suite later the previous night. Hack, hack, hack. Esther's nice knife stabs away at some strawberries. 
Esther, clad in fe leather fetish gear, wipes away some berry juice and carries the tray of fruit over to a large bed with silk sheets. Dimitri and Annika lounge, na lounge naked under the covers. No one could stab fruit quite like you, Esther. It's far more efficient than slicing if you do it right. Now, which of you naughty bitches wants a juice cleanse? Ooh, ooh, I would mother. Uh, we agreed my new name was Comrade Cock Ubine. Annika slinks up behind Esther. So, what does the comrade desire? Honestly, a moon's over my hammy. Annika runs her hands down Esther's shoulders. At the moment of physical contact, Esther has a full body chill. Their eyes go wide. Interior, Esther's train of thought, engine cab. Soldier Esther and the engine crew crack a few beers. A makeshift banner behind them reads, mission accomplished, we made it through triple X. Soldier Esther is giving a toast. There's no bones about it. This has been a record setting fucked up day for us. I couldn't have survived it without my Esther's. Be it the tremors, the relaxation, the psychedelic visions, the laughter, or... Is that? The crew looks out the window and off into the distance where an enormous champagne-colored tidal wave is fast approaching. Total ecstasy. The wave roars with the sound of one million orgasms mixed flawlessly with the hit ska song, The Impression That I Get by the Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. Exterior... Exterior cartel mansion. Esther's voice rings out into the night. Here we go! Esther's final words match perfectly with the first chorus, which plays triumphantly over the credits. Solvent squad, solvent squad, getting back together because life sucks on their own. Solvent squad, solvent squad, scooby dooby, ray dooby, zippity bop. 